All right, guys, so we are going to set up the uh, grow watt and start doing a little bit of testing and playing with it. I've got a bunch of these uh, 250 watt Trina uh, home solar cells, and I haven't done any full testing of any of them yet. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start that process today. So what we're going to do is get set up using my line batteries to start because um, I still have I still have to do a bit uh, of charging and capacity testing on those silicate salt cells from our our houseboat that we had some issues with that I was talking about previously. Um, so I'm actually going to use the grow watt to charge and test and discharge and all of that stuff. So I figured I'll use the lion cells. Um, and while I'm doing that, we can test these Trina cells and see what kind of output we're actually getting. And uh, I'll walk you through that whole process and show you kind of what we're doing. Here we have one of our lion cells. Uh, that's gonna, going to be my jumper to give me 24 volts. So I'm going to go from negative to positive and then these are going to be my negative and positive connections right here um, my other lion cells down here um, and then with the lithium iron phosphate it's always a good idea to have a battery equalizer because the equalizer will make sure that both your batteries are getting charged equally um, what might end up happening, and I'll probably put a link on this video to uh, Ian's video over at Watts 24-7 here where I got this. Um, of course, it's not going to focus. <laughs> what is going on? Anyhow, um, Watts 24-7, that's their logo. Um, and Ian does a great job explaining what happens with these lithium ion, uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Inside here, there is a VMS. Um, you can see that it gives you battery reading right there. When you push on the button, it tells you what the percentage is. That VMS controls how much power can come out and go into this battery. Uh, it shuts down for low temp and over temp and stuff like that, making these um, as safe as possible. So what ends up happening, like I said, I'll probably just put a link to Ian's video because he's probably going to describe better um, be able to explain better what's going on. Uh, what ends up happening is when this is shoving power into these two batteries here, um, you end up with a issue where, um, let's get these set up so I can kind of demonstrate a little bit better. Um, you end up with an issue where one battery is going to charge faster than the other uh, and it's going to get fully charged before the other one. Well, if I understand it correctly, and Ian can explain better I'm sure, but if I understand correctly, is if this one gets fully charged and this one's only say 60% or so, the BMS will say, hey, we're being overcharged on this one, in some cases at least. I don't know if Lion has this problem or if it's all uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries, but uh, at some point, this one will read, hey, uh, we're overcharged, we need to shut down, and it will stop allowing power flow. And then what happens is this reads 24 volts and everything looks good because you have a surface charge, but the BMS is actually shut off on this. There's a a resistor or something that allows you to read the voltage in here but it won't let you actually draw power if I'm understanding correctly. Uh, what that causes is a false reading on here that it's working properly. It reads 24 volts but the second you try to pull power, whichever BMS is in safety mode, um, it won't let any power and then the second this puts any sort of draw at all, your voltage will drop instantly to 13, 14 volts, whatever the one battery plus, you know, the little resistor is letting out, and then this thing stops working. Um, and he does a great video explaining because a lot of people will complain when they're running a setup like this that, hey, it's working fine, and then all of a sudden it just stopped working, and now it's doing these weird things. Well, this equalizer will ensure that if this one has a higher battery voltage, it's going to take power from this and put it into this. 
So that way this should hopefully never reach that state of overcharged in its BMS. Uh, and this one should be able to get fully charged and um, you don't run into the problems of um, that BMS shutting down and wreaking havoc on your system. So just want to do a quick explainer as to what this is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing wired in, get this thing wired up. And then I actually, in my scraps here, found a um, cable with already existing. I think this is a four gauge. It might be two gauge. I'll take a look at it uh, and let you know for sure. But um, we're not going to be pulling high power out of this thing. So whatever this is, I mean, I'd like to go with single lot. But whatever it is, we're not drawing any sort of high power. And this is testing. This is going to be ever developing, ever changing until we figure out what we like. Um, and then later on down the road, we'll use these uh, batteries for some testing. This battery particular, uh, there's some corrosion here. I'm doing another video on that. We're gonna see what's under there and how bad it is. But this will allow me to immediately start testing the solar panels and getting our voltage readings and seeing, or sorry, not voltage, or wattage readings and seeing exactly what those used panels are putting out. Um, granted, I'm here in Utah, northern Utah boot, so I'm not expecting to, to be able to pull 250 watts out of those panels. Uh, so we'll see what we actually get with those. Uh, and I, well, let me take you out, and show you my temporary setup, and we'll play with it and go from there. All right, excuse the mess. Uh, I'm going through and pretty much tearing up my whole yard garage everything um, but this is my temporary setup that cord right there runs along the shelves right into the grow watt um, never mind this probably won't be in very many more videos because it's going to be cleaned up hopefully so i've got this old hunk a junk enclosed trailer that i almost don't use at all anymore and where my house is um, i have sun coming from the east over here and it comes up and goes all the way over to the west well i don't want to set any panels in my driveway because we use the driveway um, and i don't want to put any in the grass or in the front yard or anything like that where they're going to be taking up space uh, and maybe cause issues with the neighbors so for now at least i am going to utilize this trailer as long as I still have it might be going soon and I'm going to put a couple panels up here to start we'll do two and test them out but for the immediate tests to see what these panels are putting out I'm going to just start with one panel and see if we're getting anywhere near that 250 watts um, and see what she does with that and then we'll go ahead and play with it from there and and add subtract whatever we decide to do um, but this is a good little starting point. Doesn't, you know, we don't have to worry about any code or permits or anything like that because they're going to be a part of the trailer. Uh, the problem is just the ugly trailer at this point. But this is a temporary setup. This is why we're testing and, and doing stuff like that. And to get you guys readings on what these panels are doing. So that way, if you're ever looking into these, um, maybe I will also put a link to where I got these. Uh, you can buy them by a pallet and I think there's 27 panels per pallet or something like that. So that is the quick rundown of what we're going to be doing here. So I'm going to start by wiring it up and running some basic tests and then we will use that system, uh, the Grow Watt, to play with our silicate salt batteries and be able to charge them up, discharge them, do whatever we need to uh, and then we'll go from there for the next steps, probably play with those lithium ion batteries, the SPIM batteries that uh, we got from uh, Alarm Hookup, uh, which is now Battery Hookup. So uh, stay tuned and let me know down in the comments if you have any questions, concerns, uh, advice, any tips or anything that uh, you recommend and maybe even ways or things we can do to test going forward. All right, guys, have a good one.